Okay, let's have a look at this birthday problem. This is a pretty popular, famous problem of probability. Uh, it's pretty fun. Uh, takes a couple of steps to explain. So I'm going to start with this question number one to work our way up to fully uh, understanding it. So question one says, suppose there are three people in a room. What's the probability of at least one shared birthday among this group? So to answer that, we'll find the complementary event that there is no shared birthday and subtract that from one. Right, because either there's at least one shared birthday or there is no shared birthday. Those two events together would add up to 100%. So I could write that equation, write an equation in this form where it turns out it'll be easier for us to calculate the probability of no shared birthday. Then we could just subtract it from one and we have the opposite uh, event probability. Okay, so we have one. Now I want to calculate the chance of no shared birthday among three people. So I'll start off with with three people. There's 365 days in a year and three people. So this is the total number of possible birthdays that could be uh, that could could occur among those three people. Now, actually, I just made an assumption there, 365 days in a year, to simplify because I know there are leap years with those leap days, and there are people who are born on February 29th, but they're pretty rare, uh, and that and those, the probability of that particular day is smaller than any other day in the year. Um, and I have to assume, because I don't really have uh, any reasonable or any easy way to, to, I have to assume all the days of the year are equally likely as birthdays uh, because I don't have really any certain information to nothing that's stated here that would indicate otherwise, right? So we're going to assume every day of the year is really equally likely. And we're not going to include leap years because they really aren't uh, equally likely to all the other days and so we'll just say well we're not going to include those and so technically this is an approximation but it's a pretty good approximation to uh, to the true value okay so this is the total number of possible birthdays that each of these three people could 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 have had right imagine a piece of paper that's uh, we're going to list the birthdays. We had 365 possibilities for the first person's birthday and 365 possibilities for that second person and likewise for the third. But this is now the probability of no shared birthday that I'm trying to determine. So how many ways could you have no shared birthday? Well, let's say that to have the event out of all those possible listings of three birthdays out of all those possibilities how many of them have no common birthday well we could say that the first person would have 365 possibilities for what their birthday would be so we have all those possibilities but then we would only have 364 possibilities for the second person to have a birthday that is not shared with the first person and then it would only be 363 possibilities for that third person to have a birthday that it was not in common with the other two. So this is the probability of no shared birthday among the three people. Now this is something of course that we could just type in the calculator and I would do that but I also want to point out that for the questions that come later it's really helpful uh, if you notice how you can change the way this is written. This would actually be um, the same as doing 365p3. And then, of course, you could simplify the way we write that as 365 cubed. So with three people, I see this three showing up in my calculation, and that's something you're going to want to trace, track through as I do other examples. But you might think, well, hold on, why is it a permutation? Why does the order even matter here? Um, it shouldn't matter at all. And it doesn't really matter, uh, but the way in which the denominator is computed, it actually implies an order. It's like I was thinking about a piece of paper that listed out the birthdays. Uh, if I thought, well, how many different birthdays could be listed first, 365, and how many birthdays could be listed second, uh, likewise, 365, and 365 for the third birthday. But these 
three birthdays then could have come in any particular order because we're listing all the possibilities with repetition and order included here in this denominator. So this is all of the ways in which three different birthdays could be listed, um, certainly no repetition, and including all those different orders because I have counted all the orders in the denominator. Okay, so that is the probability of no shared birthday. Now that's something that um, certainly you type into a calculator to make it easier to to get a value that's a practical decimal value. So let me round it off there. It's about 0.992 when you type all that in. Okay, so as a rough approximation, it's about uh, eight tenths of a percent, right? Less than one percent chance with three people less than 1% chance if they are just random uh, three people that had, so right, just uh, for three random people, very small chance that uh, there would be a shared birthday in that group of three people. Let's move on and look at a larger group and think through the same sort of reasoning. In a class of 30 students, what's the probability of at least one shared birthday in that group of 30? So I'll start off just as before. The probability of at least one shared birthday is one minus the probability of no shared birthday. So we could just calculate the chance of no shared birthday. That's easier because the opposite of no shared birthday would be at least one shared birthday. Right? At least one is complicated because it could be one shared birthday or two shared birthdays. What I mean by two shared birthdays is you could actually have um, three people that have the same uh, birthday, or you'd have two different birthdays that are shared among several people. All sorts of complicated things. Well, I guess saying at least one shared birthday, you might have three people that share one birthday, or four people, or you could have two shared birthdays. It's actually pretty crazy what can happen. There was one year I did this in a classroom, a regular size classroom, maybe around 30 students, and there was one pair of students that had a shared birthday, another pair of students that had a shared birthday, and then one of the students and I had a shared birthday in that one class, right? So there were like three different birthdays that were shared among six people. <laughs> Well, obviously, you would have to have at least four people to have two shared birthdays, but <laughs> no need to get into all of those complicated. The whole entire point here is that this is much easier. No shared birthday. We can just figure out the probability that among the 30 people, there is no shared birthday. Subtract that from one, and we'll have figured this out. So let's do it that way. Well, just like before, what I'm really doing is let's say 365 days in a year is a you know a simplification to make this manageable and because we have 30 people we have the possibility now of 365 poss birthdays possible for the first person and the second and the third and all 30 people and because I really want to start at 365 possibilities for the first person and 364 and 363 and go all the way down actually for 30 different days well, that's not convenient to write out. So what we could do is just say 365p30. So that would start at the number 365, and it would then multiply times 364, 363, all the way down for 30 different numbers, so that we've really just right here on the top counted the number of ways in which we could have 30 people with different birthdays, none of them repeating, right? Because it's counting down for 30 different, for 30 different people. It's counting order because the denominator is counting all the orders in which those 30 people could list their birthdays. And that's it. So then we could just type that in. Now this is, you know, obviously a calculator um, operation. You could either type the whole thing in all at once, which is fine. In fact, you could even type 1 minus this all at once. I think what I'll do here, just because I have another thing I could explain, is that if you type just the numerator, you're going to see scientific notation, which 
you know, you can round off to any number of digits here. Let's say two digits is pretty accurate. Um, so what it's in scientific notation, it's times 10 to the 76 power. And then when I do the denominator, if you did it separately, uh, you get 7.39, roughly, times 10 to the 76. Now you might think, oh, you have to type all this in to divide, but actually these will cancel anyway. So you really just have to divide these numbers because these are the same and they're factors on the top and the bottom. So this is roughly 0.29 when you uh, round off this value, which means that finally we have about 0.71. So that's about a 71% chance, which is pretty surprising really if you hadn't thought through this only 30 people there's 365 days in a year and it just seems kind of surprising that there's such a high probability of a shared birthday among a group of only 30 students now if you get to larger and larger groups of people probability continues to go up and up and you can look this up on Wikipedia and it's a pretty good entry there that really explains a lot and has this picture that is a graph of uh, increasing number of people along the horizontal and the probability of a pair that share a birthday that is at least one shared birthday so what we calculated was with 30 people you see it's about okay there I uh, had to get the line tool out here to make a straight line so that if you calculated if you had 30 people, this graph indicates roughly 70%, which is which what is what we calculated. Uh, and you can see that it takes about 23 people to hit that 50-50 mark, where you have a 50% chance of a shared birthday with a group of only 23 people, which is really surprising, right? It, it seems surprising that such a small group, uh, with so many days in a year, that there's a shared birthday. So increasing the number of people the probability gets closer and closer to 100 percent well we have uh, on the Wikipedia page uh, some more pre uh, precise values as, as you hit 50 people you're at about 97 percent 70 people 99.9 99.97 so one thing that's kind of interesting is that you know it keeps getting closer and closer to 100% probability but it doesn't hit 100% until you have more than 366 if you assume no leap years um, so let's take a look at that assuming that there are 366 different possible birthdays really because we're in, if we go back and include leap years and we say really how many people do you really actually have to have to have a really true 100% probability of at least one shared birthday you'd actually have to have a 367 people 367 people are required for a 100% probability of at least one shared birthday now this is actually due to this thing called the pigeonhole principle. If we take into account that there are truly 366 days on which somebody, people can be born on any one of the 366 possible days uh, on which birthdays can occur, it is theoretically possible that you could have a group of 366 people. And in that group of 366 people, it's very unlikely, but it is theoretically possible that everybody in that group could have a different birthday, right? I mean, you could actually choose. It might take you a long time to find all those people so that there is no shared birthday in the group. Imagine how really difficult that would be considering these probabilities as, as we've seen. But it is possible to create a group of 366 people and everybody with a different birthday but once you hit 367 then it is impossible uh, to have uh, everybody with a different birthday so really 367 is when you finally hit the point that it's a hundred percent probability there's going to be a shared birthday in the group 
So finally, one question to sort of uh, finish this off, number four here. If you had a classroom of 30 students and one of the students announces that his birthday is, let's say, November 9th, just some random day, what's the probability of at least one other student sharing this particular birthday? Right? This is a very different question. It's like, what's the chance that there's at least one shared birthday with this particular date already established in advance? So I'll start off just as before. The probability of at least one shared birthday would be equal to 1 minus the probability of no shared birthday among these 30 people. So one person announces their particular birthday, and you've got 20 other, 29 other people. And what I'll do is I'll uh, calculate the chance that uh, we'll calculate the chance that each of those 29 other people have a birthday that is not the same as November 9th. Right, so that's 364 days in a year. I mean 364 other days, 365 days in a year total. And then we raise to a power 29 because we're, this is the chance that uh, each one of those other 29 people had a birthday that was just not the, the 9th of November, right? So any of the other 364 days. That's the 364 over 365 is the probability for each one of them. And assuming that their birthdays are all independent and uh, equally likely to be any day of the year, we raise it to a power 29 because it's effectively like we're saying the probability that the first person is not born on November 9th and the next person is not born on November 9th and the third and the fourth and each of those 29 other people have some other day than the one particular day that was given like November 9. So that sets it up and you can type that in the calculator and get about 0 0.07 nine so seven point nine percent right so that's kind of more in line with what your intu intuition might be with a group of 30 people if you say what's the chance that somebody has my birthday uh, it's only about eight percent chance that somebody has the same birthday as a particular date like you know if you thought of your own birthday or a birthday such as November 9 this is a small chance that in that group of 30, there's a shared birthday with that particular date. But it's a whole different question when you say, what's the probability that there is a shared birthday among the group? Right? And you can see how that plays out, for example, in something like the lottery. It's a really small probability that I would win the lottery, but it's a much higher probability that somebody wins the lottery. So there's a similar kind of uh, distinction. Okay, I think that'll be the end of this video, and I hope it has been helpful.